What's going on guys, this is Derek Bros with the Houston Freethinkers and I'm happy to bring to you an exclusive interview with Adam Kokesh who you should know the name by now if you haven't heard of the past few weeks. What's going on Adam? Hey, thanks so much for having me on. Yeah man, we got a lot to talk about. I want to get caught up before we get to some questions that we have but I'm not even going to tell the whole story. If people don't know about what we, what's been going on the past few weeks then you guys need to catch up. Adam was arrested just a couple weeks ago. Let everybody know I guess how, what happened at in Philadelphia on smoke down prohibition well I was uh, pulled out of a crowd by federal agents uh, they tried to tackle me and couldn't but I, I was arrested last Saturday on the 18th at, at smoke down prohibition 5 a marijuana legalization rally and I was planning on engaging in civil disobedience but didn't get the chance I was arrested before I got to break any laws and uh, it was a pretty clear-cut case of selective political prosecution, including the way that the case was handled and, and how we were detained and denied bail. But all of this was uh, because of the loaded open carry march that we have planned for D.C. for Independence Day. And that's off now, uh, not canceled, but we've decided as the government has said they are going to escalate or shown that they have escalated their tactics, we are escalating as well. And by doing so, we have uh, taken this and made it a, an open source event, much more broadly available to the public and less dependent on me, partly because I was afraid that if the government was willing to disappear people as organizers for political reasons, then having an event like this or having it centrally focused or dependent on one person was not a good idea. But I want to say that I was able to play hardball as a, as a detainee and refused to cooperate at every step along the way and I was released on Friday with my felony assault charges reduced to citations which I refused to sign incidentally and uh, they they let me go anyways but I, I want to thank everybody who made that possible because if it wasn't for everybody on the outside making noise with the call floods protesting outside of the prison and donating to the legal defense fund which is now a legal attack fund it wouldn't have been possible for me to be released so soon because I wouldn't have been working, uh, I wouldn't have had the same kind of leverage behind my actions of not cooperating. But when it came down to it, after the court hearing on Thursday and I refused bail because of the conditions, I was volunteering to do up to 100 days of solitary confinement. And it was because I refused to take a PPD shot and be released into the general population. And I was going to stand uh, and demand uh, my right to a speedy trial. So they would have up to 30 days to indict me and up to 70 days to initiate the trial. So when that happened, they basically didn't, didn't know what to do with me. And I had already, uh, while we were in prison, we announced the, the follow-up smoke down event, which is very important for people who, who want to work on the issue of marijuana legalization, ending the drug war, uh, smoke down prohibition, joint summit with President Shum. As soon as we realized that we were denied bail, we said, well, we're in prison. Fuck it. Let's organize another event. Let's announce it right here. And we said, we, we, as political prisoners, we might not be there in body, but we will be there in spirit. Fortunately, I'm going to be able to be there since I completely beat my charges and a Poe is on bail and is, is uh, subject to conditions associated with that and unless his charges are dropped might not be able to make it on June 8th but we definitely encourage everybody to join us for that for that but you know after a couple more days and realizing that I might be there for a while and actually realizing the implications of what it meant to be uh, a political prisoner and and obviously it wasn't because of the marijuana it was because of the loaded open carry march that's by far the greater threat to government that, that, that we're calling for the overthrow of government which is what we're doing although you could make the case that this government has already overthrown itself by violating the constitution and rendered itself invalid and i wrote this i'd like to share it with you it's the uh... the final american revolution yeah go ahead when a government excuse me go ahead Yes. When a government has repeatedly and deliberately failed to follow its own laws, violated the fundamental human rights of its citizens, threatened the sanctity of a free press, created institutions intended to eliminate privacy of communication, waged war at the behest of special interests that threatens the public safety, killed hundreds of children with drone strikes, imprisoned and destroyed the lives of countless individuals for victimless crimes, stifled economic opportunity to maintain the dominance of the financial elite, stolen from the people through an absurd system of taxation and inflation, sold future generations into debt slavery and abused its power to suppress political opposition it is unfit to exist and it becomes the duty of the people to alter or abolish that government by whatever means necessary to secure liberty and ensure peace a new american revolution is long overdue this revolution has been brewing in the hearts and minds of 
of the people for many years, but they, it shall take new form as the American Revolutionary Army will march on each state capital to demand that the governors of these 50 states immediately initiate the process of an orderly dissolution of the federal government through secession and reclamation of federally held property. Should one whole year pass from this July 4th while the crimes of this government are allowed to continue, we may have passed the point at which nonviolent revolution becomes impossible. The time to sit idly by has passed. To remain neutral is to be complicit. Just doing your job is not an excuse, and the line in the sand has been drawn between we the people and the criminals in Washington, D.C. While some timid souls will say that if it is too early, or that it is too early, that we can solve the problem of this government through the democratic means that it has provided, that current levels of taxation are reasonable for the services provided, and that the crimes of this government are merely a tolerable nuisance, it may already be too late. While there is risk in drastic action, the greater danger lies in allowing this government to continue unchallenged. So if you are content with the status quo, stay home, get fat, watch the fireworks from a safe distance, and allow this Independence Day to pass like any other. But if you see as we see and feel as we feel, we will see you on the front lines of freedom on July 4th, 2013. For this, the final American Revolution. Yeah, those are quite powerful words, Adam. I, I saw them the other day whenever it was posted by Lucas and... You know, I, I reposted on on my page, and we've been seeing seeing it set the internet ablaze with people of all across the board, even your own supporters who um, are against the idea, who think that maybe your words are coming too quickly. Like you said, people who uh, one might think are timid and are afraid of what this action could lead to. But you know, I want to get into some details further about the march. You did say so. The main march that was originally planned, open carry on D.C., that has been canceled, and now it's going towards inviting everyone to set up state capital marches and are you planning to have those marches or are you asking that those marches be armed as well as the original DC one? It's up to the individuals who are participating and the organizers in those 50 states. We actually have already had an incredible flood of support from people and, and to a certain degree this was happening already after announcing the open carry march on Washington that people were saying we would like to rally in our state capital. We want to do something symbolic and important for Independence Day but we can't make it to DC that day. Can we, can we, and, and people were doing this already. So we've just shifted the focus to that and really stepped up the, the tactics to say, this is about a specific call for a specific action from state governments and to press this issue about secession and, and abolishing the Fed. Yeah, definitely. This is a, it's, it's a big, it's a big move. And as I said, there's criticism coming. I had a couple of questions from some of your fans. One, someone at, wanted me to ask you if you think that it's past the point of nonviolence being effective. We're going to find out. Do you think? I that, don't think we've. I don't think we've stepped up nonviolent tactics sufficiently to be able to say that conclusively. But we're going to find out. So perhaps maybe then why don't we encourage over the next year? Because on, on the page you, and on that statement you you, you list grievances and, and we went through them. There's about ten or eleven grievances. And you asked the question or posed the question that if by next year, you know, it might be, it might be past the point of nonviolence, why don't we encourage everyone over the next year to increase our nonviolent civil disobedience at, you know, federal buildings, at any way we can to, uh, to put up our defense and to, to stage these, this nonviolent attack on the federal government before it does get to that point? Maybe you're right. Maybe we haven't been pushing it hard enough. No, absolutely. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct, Derek, to, 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 to make that call. And, and it's something that we haven't quite gotten into uh, giving any specific form to. But if it's to truly be the final American revolution, it's not going to have leaders. And it might have organizers or facilitators or people providing specific information services. But if there are to be leaders of these events, then that means there are followers. And if there are followers, then they're not part of the freedom movement. They're not people who are ready to lead themselves. And that's part of what we're really fundamentally altering here. So as that happens, Derek, I would be ecstatic to see that people take this upon themselves as part of the American Revolutionary Army or whatever it is that they want to call themselves to be a part of this effort to step up the tactics and civil disobedience and nonviolent resistance. But mark my words, come next July 4th, we're going to be reassessing this. And if, if it turns out that the nonviolence of, of addressing these problems from the top down is completely insufficient, then it may be time to start considering more drastic action. Yeah, I agree with that, and and uh, I I, th I do think that you know you putting it that way, it was a, it was a good move 
taking you out of the equation more. And I think there still is a portion of even those who I like the ideas of liberty and uh, the freedom movement who are looking for leaders, who, are, who want to follow Adam Kokesh or Derek Bros or Gary Franchi or Luke Kurowski or anybody that they see and they attach you know, some emotion to because they, they like the way you present the information or whatever it may be, when ultimately I believe, and you, know, you just stated our goal is to lead people to leading themselves. So we have to break free of that. And your, you know, your name was all over the place, of course, associated with the march for creating the idea. And it started to become more where they could attack you. Obviously, they can come detain you. They can write articles trying to break you down and uh, make the, the march seem less about a cause and more just about you promoting yourself. But if we spread it amongst all of us and allow these ideas to happen, then that's a lot harder for them to do. Absolutely. So one other question someone was getting into, they're saying now that you've uh, you know, you've got all, all the uh, the gun supporters. Obviously, we know those who are liberty-minded understand tyranny. Know that the Second Amendment and gun ownership in general is protection from a tyrannical government. And along with those who are aware of that, uh, it seems like you've got a bit of uh, some neocons on your audience now who are who supporting the cause. And someone wanted to know how you how do you plan to deal with uh, neocons amongst the ranks now? Well, if they're in our ranks, they're not really neocons anymore, and we welcome them. <laughs> Good one, good one. All right, well, I, um, I want to get into some criticisms here now. And this is what I, I told you about before. There's, of course, those who have seen the situation um, amongst the liberty-minded. There is also the conspiratorial-minded. And um, from the beginning, people, some who criticize your march for being uh, too brass or, you know, they said you're moving too quickly, whatever, whatever it may be. They said, you know, this, he's, a, he's a COINTEL agent trying to lead us to uh, a revolution so they can install martial law and, and, you know, destroy the movement, blah, 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 things like that. So there's those criticisms. There's also some who, since you have been arrested and released, c continue to make these claims and even were attacking uh, the freeadamkokesh.com uh, website, which was created by Ian Coffey. And uh, I don't know if you've heard this one yet, but the website was created on May 12th. And I don't, I don't, maybe you were already aware about that. Maybe you helped Ian make it. And you were arrested on May 18th. So yeah. people take this as you guys knew you were going to be arrested, um, and then not counting July 4th. And so it, it has to be a PSYOP. What do you think about that? I think the greatest argument against me having anything to do with being a government agent at this point is that I'm far too competent to work for the government anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, some would argue that or, you know, you're the perfect, uh, you have the, you're the perfect smooth enough, uh, well-speaking agent to come get us and co-opt a movement and lead us astray. But I guess, you know what? If that were the case, I would hope I'd be getting paid better. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, hey, if you are an agent, I hope you're getting, getting paid pretty good. You know, this is another thing, Adam, I've sort of become associated with this now be, by working uh, with you. For those who are watching, I, you know, full disclosure, I interned with Adam last uh, November, so maybe I'm an agent too, and maybe this is all a cover-up. That's one thing that I, I personally was accused of. And what I would like to reference to that, because I, I ask these questions in a serious manner because people have these concerns, but what I would say in that regard, and when people bring these things up about Alex Jones or Adam Kokesh or any you know, so-called leader that people try to make into a leader, is that if you're not following people, then you don't have anything to worry about. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I listen to your show, Adam, uh, from time to time. We work together. But if you say things that start going against what I believe to be uh, right and just, then we'll part ways. And there's nothing, you know, that, that's where we'll part ways. So as long as you're thinking of your own mind and of your own accord, then you don't have to worry about somebody else being an agent. You can help keep them uh, at bay. But if you're following your own ideas and you're under your own rule, then how can somebody else lead you astray is sort of my thoughts on it. Absolutely. No, it's a very good point. But I, I just also want to add that I, I love all these attacks. You know, the, the people that are attacking me only serve to discredit themselves. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to fear. And I have the truth on my side. And anybody who knows me like you, Derek, understands what I'm all about from having the way, the way that we work together in the field even. An agent could not do that. An agent could not do what I have done as a media producer over the past three years. An, an agent could have not had the positive impact that, that I have had and, and, and hope that that would somehow give them credibility to do something counterproductive to, to liberty because the, the truth is out there and all I've done is forward the truth and do my best to speak the truth and provide information that's of value to my audience. All right, well, if you've got nothing to hide, this is the last question, then I want to move on to some more uh, philosophy ideas. Um, I'm just going to mention the name, and I'm sure you've heard this before, but uh, Fort Pendleton. Camp Pendleton. Camp Pendleton, even better. You do know, you know what I'm talking about? 
It's where I went. Uh, well, I did part of my boot camp there, and I was stationed there when I was with the uh, Third Civil Affairs Group as a reserve unit. And apparently, Mark Dice and tons of other people are associated with it, and it's a CIA uh, agent camp. And you spent time there, and it was on your Wikipedia page at one point, and has since been deleted. And you must have something to hide. Ah, uh, yes. No, it's, Camp Pendleton is like it's 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 a major Marine Corps base. There's nothing secretive about it. I mean, yeah, there's probably facilities there, and who knows what government agents are doing what. But no, I, when I went through there. Um, all of my time is accounted for, and that's it's one of the more ridiculous accusations. All right, but really, it's you know people can throw that stuff out and discredit themselves all they want. I say bring it on. Really, it's just it, when when people uh, attack me, they're showing that they have no regard for the truth, and they they only serve to discredit themselves, and they drive their audiences towards me. So I'm I'm more than happy to say bring it on, keep keep it coming. But if you want to reference my Wikipedia page, it's really funny. If, if you could look through the entire history of it, at some point, my affiliations were uh, Al Qaeda and, um, and, the, and the Black Panthers and, and the, the Communist Party. I mean, it's been trolled. My, my Wikipedia page has been trolled that hard that there's been just all sorts of crazy stuff put on it at, at one time or another. Yeah, well, I asked him, guys. You, it's up for you to decide. You know, maybe he's still lying. I mean, it's up to you. But uh, moving on, one one other question that someone had. It was more of a tactical question. You mentioned the drug war earlier, and obviously you were arrested at Smoke Down Prohibition, and you're planning another one uh, in D.C. Someone was suggesting, well, what about leading a million marijuana march, something along that point, like basically making, you know, I guess what you're doing with Smoke Down Prohibition in D.C. Like instead of everyone marching with uh, guns, everyone marching with joints. Well, that's what this is. But we're not doing a march. It's just a rally in front of the White House, June 8th, joint summit with President Shum. And mm -hmm. if we could get a million pot smokers there, we could uh, we, maybe we could get marijuana off schedule one. Yeah, that would, that, that would be something, man. Well, anything else you want to leave us with before we let you go for the day? I know you've got a lot, lot to get to and to continue pushing uh, for the, the final American Revolution. Well, I appreciate that. And, and I, I'll just say about that, about this being the final American Revolution, it's time for people to come to grips with the fact that this is an empire in decline and that the federal government is completely unsustainable at this point. I've thought for a long time that our message as libertarians, so to speak, was, hey, guys, we can do this the easy way or we can do this the hard way. And when it comes to the fate of the federal government, an orderly disillusion through secession would be far easier than seeing it collapse under its own weight, the kind of chaos that would ensue and the, the, the dangerous things the government might do in its death throes. So really, this, this could be the last chance for us to do it the easy way rather than the hard way. But people are going to have to understand that if you want another revolution, it's not all going to be, you know, apple pie and, and American flags. It's going to be overturning that. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a revolution and something new is going to come out of it. This is what is, is, is being called for now. And I think something uh, as drastic as this is the only thing that is worthwhile in, in terms of being called a revolution. So you wanted it. You asked for it. You got it. This is the form it's going to take. If you want to declare your independence, you actually have to declare your independence independence from something. Get out of the hive, get away from the herd, get out of the pack, be an individual, and join us to the extent that you can be part of our voluntary collective for the American Revolutionary Army and bring an end to this crime that is the United States federal government. All right, Adam. I actually, you know, and I got to throw in one more question just because you just, you just reminded me of it and you, you're, you're, you're making me think of some good stuff. And I, um, Secession, moving towards secession, this is, just, this is just, I guess, on the tactics of it. You say that the secession would be the quickest, the cleanest way to do it instead of waiting for the collapse. And some would say the agorist approach would be more to keep building agorist pockets and to keep building these um, to outweigh the status majority so that when it does collapse, we're already there and we have it built in order to offer this new alternative. But do you think, you know, moving towards secession is a, is a cleaner approach and do you think that is still an agorist approach? It's not agorist, it's political, but it's uh, certainly an anti-political use of the political system to say we're going to eliminate an entire level of government. And I do, uh, I, I'm an agorist, I'm a, a, a great proponent of agorism. Uh, agoristmetals.com is what I named my website to sell uh, you know, silver coins that, that actually say voluntarism on them. But 
we're in a position where you know we we can try all of these approaches and 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 i think agorism is is more important than this political part but uh it's the agorism is sort of yeah I, I like to define agorism very inclusively it's you know agorism isn't just the people like us who avoid paying taxes and avoid giving into government authority because we reject its authority but it's really everybody who goes well geez if i barter or if i do cash deals under the table and don't have to pay taxes i'm better off and i don't have any moral obligation to give the government anything and and i think in that sense agorism is happening. Agorism is more of an organic force than a deliberate force. Does that make sense? That mm -hmm. that agorism is a product of how people react to incentives. And as we do it more deliberately, yes, we can have more specific things that are is designed to compete with government agencies like mutual aid organizations, uh, things like Shield Mutual. You know, like I mentioned, George Donnelly. Uh, with, with his service, things like that. I think that's incredibly important. And, and really, that is, that is the, the broader social framework, the foundation uh, on, on which this political can, change can happen. And if that shift hasn't happened first, then you know, the, the politics will be insignificant. But if we can free up this one great barrier or threat to agorist activity that is the federal government, we can have a lot more agorism when we reduce government down to the state level. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. And my pleasure, as always. There you go, guys. I asked him the questions that you put forth to me. Um, he gave some, you know, some intelligent, good answers, and I think it's up for us to decide now. You, those of you who clamored and got excited about this open carry march on D.C., those of you who are against it, now the march has spread. It's all 50 capitals. It's more open source. It's not focused on Adam, so there's no leader to disappear. There's no person to uh, smear in the media. It's up to us to continue to decide how we want to lead this revolution. So organized marches on your capitals, armed, unarmed, uh, marijuana marches. I really believe that Adam is correct that we're at a pivotal point now where we have to decide, are we going to continue to allow government to do this? Those of you from the left, the right, those who don't buy into the government politics, post-political, apolitical, we need to come together in the sense that we recognize that this government is illegitimate, that it is criminal, whether you recognize that because of taxation or because um, they let people go poor and let people starve while they spend billions on war. Whatever your cause is, the environment, health, civil liberties, we need to recognize that we have common ground. This government is the enemy to freedom. This government is the biggest block to a free human race that reaches our fullest potential. So decide what you want to do. Organize on this march or maybe it really is time for us to start kicking off civil disobedience and nonviolent resistance all around the country. Adam's saying one year from now we should reconsider and I don't think that's a bad idea. Maybe it's time for us to step it up. We saw the way that the Occupy movement was treated all around the country. For a second we had the country listening and watching and seeing what the police will do to those who stand up. We watch thousands and thousands in the streets all around the country, all around the world and other countries marching, marching for freedom for, for their own causes. And yet we sit by here in America believing the lies that were fed by the matrix. We have become the new fascist empire. The government has become. But we're separate from that. We are free if we choose to be. So let's decide what we want to do. We can give them a year or we can decide right now we want to be free. My choice is to organize as much nonviolent civil disobedience I can for the next year on as many causes as possible in Houston and all around Texas and with anyone else who will listen and who wants to get involved. That's my choice. You make yours. Signing off for the Houston Freethinkers, this is Derek Rose.